Welcome to our quarterly market review for second quarter 2014. My name is Charlie Massimo, CEO of CJM Wealth Management. Moving forward, this will be an ongoing report um, that we provide our clients just to give them an overview for the quarter. And the report will feature world capital market performance and the timeline of events for the past quarter. It'll begin with a global overview and features the returns of stock asset classes, both in the U.S. as well as in the international markets. The report will also illustrate the performance of a globally diversified portfolio and will feature a topic of the month. So as we turn to look at all of the markets for the quarter, we'll see that each market, whether U.S. or, or international, had very strong performances for the quarter, with global real estate leading the way at a, a return of almost 8%. And even the bond markets are a very strong quarter uh, for both U.S. and global bonds. And if we take a look at the headlines for the quarter, um, we'll, we'll realize that for the quarter there's been a lot of news, as there is in any other quarter, both negative and positive. But again, these headlines are not offered to explain market returns. Instead, they serve as a reminder that investors should view daily events from a longer-term perspective and avoid making investment decisions based solely on the news. If we look at world asset classes, equity markets posted positive performance for the quarter led by emerging markets. This was the first quarterly period in which emerging markets had outperformed developed markets since the third quarter of 2012. REITs, both in the U.S. and in developed non-U.S. markets, outperformed equities. Large cap indices outperformed small cap indices in the developed and emerging markets, including the U.S. In general, value outperformed growth indices, though performance was mixed within size ranges and regions. Turning our attention to the U.S. stock market, the U.S. equity market recorded positive performance with large caps outperforming small caps for the quarter. Value outperformed growth within small cap and mid cap indices. And within large caps, value and growth indices recorded similar performance. And if we look down to the right, what we'll realize is that we're coming off of some very strong performance years in the market, both for one, three, five, and even 10-year periods. Despite 2008, the U.S. equity markets have performed incredibly well. And if we look to the left, we'll see that the U.S. market now makes up about 50% of the world market capitalization. Turning our attention to the international developed stocks, international developed market indices recorded similar performance to the U.S. with large caps outperforming small cap indices. Value indices outperformed growth indices across all size segments, and the U.S. dollar depreciated relative to many of the major international developed currencies. And again, if we look down to the right, we'll, we'll notice that while not as strong as the U.S. markets, the international markets, both over five years as well as 10 years, has performed very strong, strong numbers, despite all the doom and gloom we've heard coming out of Europe, especially. And right now, if we look to the left, international developed stocks make up about 39% of the world market capitalization. If we look at emerging market stocks, in a reversal from the previous quarter, emerging markets led equity returns versus developed markets, including the U.S., as with developed markets, large caps outperformed small cap indices for the quarter. Value outperformed growth across all size segments with the exception of mid caps. And again, the U.S. dollar depreciated relative to many of the major emerging market currencies. If we look down to the right, what we'll notice is the 10-year return for emerging markets have outpaced both international and U.S. developed countries. And emerging markets now make up about 11% of the world market capitalization, as we see to the left. What is the relevance of, of world market capitalization? Well, when we build portfolios at CJM, we try to build them that shows or that, that, that reflects the way the world is growing. So if the U.S. makes up 50% of the world market capitalization, to us it doesn't make sense to overload a portfolio of 80-90% U.S. stocks when that's really not the way the world is growing. Real estate investment trusts again returned positive performance, outperforming broad market equity indices in, in the U.S. and developed non-U.S. markets. Again, a very strong 1, 3, 5, and 10-year performance from REITs. And you can see the difference between REITs um, in the U.S. as well as overseas, with the U.S. making up 56% of the total REIT 
um, capitalization, while, while overseas REITs make up about 44%. And again, at CGM, we maintain an allocation to REITs at all times. Now, if we look at global diversification and, and the positive impact global diversification has on a portfolio, you'll see below some of CJM portfolios uh, where we illustrate the performance of different global stock bond mixes and highlight the benefits of diversification. Obviously, mixes with larger allocations to stocks are considered riskier, but have higher expected returns over time. And if you look down to the left, you can see the vast difference between a 100% stock portfolio at CGM versus those that are geared much more toward fixed income. And I think this is vitally important. As we get older, we tend to get a more conservative portfolio, but unfortunately, we give up way too much in return. And again, for many of us who are going to be living as many years in retirement as we are working, our attention to growth is vitally important throughout our life, and giving up too much growth is really just exchanging one risk for, the, for another, and that's the potential of running out of money. I decided to pick an article from Jim Parker at our um, investment part is at Dimensional Fund Advisors called Connecting the Dots. And as, it's, as the article starts, I'm not going to read the entire article, but as it states that human beings love stories, but this innate tendency can lead us to imagine connections between events where none really exist. For financial journalists, this is a virtual job requirement. For investors, it can be a disaster. As we've seen in the previous slides, with all the doom and gloom that's been coming out of the media, CNBC, every single journalist, imagine if you based your investment decisions over the past 10 years on that doom and gloom report. As an investor, you would have missed out on significant returns and seriously had an impact to your financial future. Again, at CJM, we turn down the noise and focus on what we know and what we know best with our partners at DFA, and that's building globally diversified portfolios.